We've got a special treat today. We've maxed out on Bang & Olufsen 2 MX7000s with matching remotes, matching motor-driven stand, matching VCR, matching DVD player, manuals. We're gonna have a bit of fun. We're gonna link them up together with some consoles and check them out, check out the backs, check the insides, do a thorough review. Let's get right into it. The history of Bang & Olufsen's MX televisions cannot be completed without honouring David Lewis. David Lewis was a British industrial designer that joined B&O as a freelancer in the 1960s. By the early 1980s, David became B&O's chief designer. His numerous designs include the BO System 2500, BO Sound 9000 CD player, BO Lab 8000 speakers, BO Lab subwoofers, the BO Avant CRT range, and many more. He also led the design to the entire LX and MX CRTV range, including the MX7000. The MX7000 debuted in 1992, having a long production run of 10 years selling in huge quantities. It should come as no surprise then that the MX7000 is lauded and a favourite of gamers around the world. The standby light resides with inside that. That might be the infrared remote receiving port area. Down here we've got the mains power switch and then the step button changes channels and it may be programmable to change volume as well. Headphone jack and we have a green LED on the inside there to indicate the power or well, the TV is on, on. And there's another one on the other side too. Two LEDs. Going around the back you can see the nice design and the shine and the clean of the MX 7000s. There's our sticker, 1997. We've got a firmware, software 3.1. Some connectors. Now you can see that connection there, four pin DIN is for the B&O stand. Fully dedicated to the stand. And the all important SCART sockets on the diagonal, clever little design there, SVHS, RF. And let's see, the other TV will be the same, but it might be a different software. What's that one? 4.3, and what was the other one? 3.1, so I've got a little difference there. Same connections. Let us not also forget the legendary BO4 remotes. One for each television, both appearing to work. They take three AAA batteries. This is the guide or the manual for the B&O DVD player. Oh, we're not color anymore. Going to a black and white in the modern era. This is the manual for the VCR. A color, nice picture of the remote. Obviously, with all the operating details, it appears to be all in full English. Printed in Denmark. Great. The manual for both televisions obviously being the same, there's also a little supplement here. Just a little bit of an extra detail, perhaps they forgot, or a software update that necessitated an extra note. Oh, it's a colour manual too, for the MX7000, listed with Australia's channel numbers, uh, colour, teletext, very nice. How to use, using in a link room, good stuff. This is also an additional manual to the VCR with connections to the MX7000 itself. SCART to SCART here, baby. It's a full SCART to full SCART connection guide. The VCR. The Bang & Olsen VCR is a sleek black unit, very square. There's the flap on the front for the tape to go in, the buttons. Eject, rewind, play, forward, record. 
going around to the back. Type 4601, 220 to 240 volts, 1997. So it's pretty much a perfect match for the MX7000. A couple of that wall and input, some faded RCA jacks, and then our scarts, glorious scarts on the VCR and RF as well. The power is supplied by a figure eight power cable. Nice, it can be removed. VCR's hooked up and playing now, having a bit of trouble with it. Optimus Prime's not looking too good. He's broadcasting a transmission from Cybertron, but it's not making it to Earth too well. I played this tape on a different VCR the other day and it worked all right, so I'd say the VCR's in need of a tune-up. Very similar to the VCR, the DVD player. May have even used the exact same casing. Sleek, black, glossy, buttons on the front to control. We'll go around to the back. I'm sure we'll see a similar situation as the VCR had. Again, figure eight, power input, DVD one, type number four, 620. Again, another set of RCAs, although we have only for sound with that column of three. And then, Composite video, S video, and the SCAR. Oh, look, there's a selector there. RGB, S video, composite, isn't that good? Always a good sign to see RGB on things. Beauty. Sorry about the movie, folks. That's all I could find. Predators. There it is. Oh, that's a nice sounding tray. I've got a reaction from the TV. It recognises it's going. Here we go. As you remember, the MX 7000s have a hell of a sound system inside, and they can go very loud. You'll get the cinema experience at home. I've got the movie paused. It's currently in RGB. We're going to go up to composite. So it's a bit brighter in composite. Go back down again, RGB. Maybe a little bit fuzzier in composite. Change over again. Yeah, definitely brighter. On text, it's certainly a bit sharper in RGB. An interesting comparison. What do you think, viewers? Here's the matching stand for the MX 7000s. Obviously, the TV goes on top then a VCR or DVD or whatever device you want to put on that platform can go there. This will rotate, we'll demonstrate that shortly. Here's the connector, this four pin DIN that goes into the television itself and gets its power and control from the television. It's fully integrated. Obviously it's a little bit weighty to support. There are in fact two versions of the stand, motorized and non-motorized. On the motorized stand, the positioning of the stand can be controlled remotely by the BO4 remote. The rotational range is 35 degrees both ways of centre. The stand can be preset from 1 to 9 positions. When the TV is turned off, it will return home, then when powered, will rotate to the user's preset. Alternatively, the stand can be rotated manually via remote at any time the user wishes. Here's a quick tip, I'm trying to get RGB activated by the TV for my PlayStation 2, which I'm not having much luck, but what I did is make sure it's on TV, right? You're pressing TV on your remote, so it's TV, it's snow. Then you press menu, go down to setup, go down to sockets, have your AV1 as TP1 and your AV2 as decoder and that should do the trick. If not, have a bit more of an experimentation. Once you've got those two set up, such as, or whatever for works for you, you can press, say, V-tape on the remote, and that'll go to SCART socket one. That's where my PlayStation 2 is connected, and it is in RGB now. Glorious RGB. Now for Rayman on the Saturn, and the Saturn is plugged into the second socket, the second SCART socket on the back of the B&O. 
We've got the PlayStation 2 in SCART socket one, and they both run RGB. So the TV accepts RGB through both SCART sockets, and Rayman's looking rather lovely too. Wonder Boy and Monster Land on the Sega Ages Collection PS2 running in 240p, looking pretty good. We've got to adjust the vertical properties of the screen to fit it in a bit better though. That would make for an improvement. Let's go into 480i. Of course, that works. You can see the flicker of the interlace effect. 480p will not work, of course. No progressive scan supported on the television. Hey. I don't know how I got in here with four players going on. That's it. B&O is open. Looking at it, you think, well, that is rather slim, isn't it? But the chassis is even out at the moment. I mean, if we go in with it, now it's locked in, but it has a very, a very slender profile without being a super slim tube that would come later from LG. Wash my mouth out with soap and water. Correction, the chassis is now pushed all the way in to make it even flusher. Amazing. There's our little neck board. And there's quite a series of board. Imagine designing this thing. You're designing it for space to fit. Some big heat sinks for, this, for the amplification of the television. Heat sink has this device here. This device in black. This device is attached to the heat sink. That must be doing the bulk of the work in the amplification of the sound because it does have quite a beefy sound system as we've said many times before. This one actually has the Philips tube label on it. It seems every time I open up a B&O the label is never there and I keep thinking B&O's got a conspiracy to hide the tube manufacturer. But this one's got it. A66EAK Philips made in Germany. Very slim. I don't know how you get to the flyback to make adjustments on it easily. I don't know if there's a remote location that you can adjust the properties of the flyback. And finally, also is the shell. There's the back shell. I'm sure B&O will use the same moulds for the 50th anniversary MX9000 that's coming out in the 2030s. Cross your fingers for that one, boys and girls. After the success of the MX7000, Manufacturing retired on this model in 2002. Flat panel technology was looming on the horizon, signalling that the end of CRT was near regrettably. However, the MX range was not yet finished, with one last hurrah, the MX8000 came to be. The MX8000 model commenced in 2002. In 2003, the then Bang & Olufsen CEO, Corbin Sorensen, asked that one inch of depth be added to the MX-8000 to make space for electronics enabling the television to be compatible with high definition video. Lewis saw this as an affront to one of the elementary principles of design. Sometimes it's not what's there that really counts. That is, truly elegant design incorporates top-notch functionality into a simple, uncluttered form. After three weeks of negotiating, the CEO abated his request. Lewis's MX-8000 would remain unchanged externally. Perhaps this design attitude helps explain why the style of the MX range is still so appealing. 
A timeless design that appeals today as strongly as it did decades ago. David Lewis's design talent is remembered by B&O fans everywhere.